So recently I was having lunch with a buddy of mine who just happens to be a lead designer at Bungie. And we were just chatting about life and video games. And I asked him, you know, from a design perspective, in your opinion, what would you say is the best designed video game of all time? And without even a hint of hesitation, he said, Tetris. Needless to say, I was extremely excited when I was commissioned to write music for, one second, this. This is the My Arcade Tetris Nano Player Pro Miniature Arcade Cabinet, and this is the My Arcade Micro Player Pro Miniature Arcade Cabinet, slightly larger, and I got to write the music for that, dude. If you've not heard of My Arcade, they're this awesome company out of California that basically creates retro hardware and it's officially licensed by the game developers of classic games like Street Fighter and Miss Pac-Man and Galaga and yes, Tetris. And now when I first got this, I was absolutely blown away. I mean, the buttons and the joystick are like so durable and satisfying and well-made. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is like a must have for anyone in your life who loves nostalgia or retro games. I mean, it makes an awesome desk decoration. It's super fun to just like take a break from work and like play a round of Tetris. Definitely check out My Arcade. They have so much cool stuff on their site. And if you choose to use my Amazon affiliate link to buy the Tetris Arcade cabinet, I get a little kickback, supports the channel at no extra cost to you. So either way, definitely check them out. They're really, really cool. But really the main point of this video is I just wanna show you that you can write 16-bit music, like authentic 16-bit chiptune with entirely free tools. I had to write an 8-bit and a 16-bit version of the Tetris theme that would be played during this game. It had to heavily quote the Tetris theme, but it also had to have enough new melodic material to stay interesting. Kind of like how Rito Village in Breath of the Wild is basically just Dragon Roost Island's theme, but slowed down, used using different arrangement, different ensemble, different instruments. So now let's talk about the software, the free tool that I keep alluding to, and it is Devil Mask. Now, if you are a fan of my channel or if you watch my videos, you know that I am a massive fan of Devil Mask. I even composed the entire soundtrack to Siberian, which is now on Steam and the Switch store, inside of Devil Mask. A lot of people on my previous video talking about how to make 8-bit music mentioned that Siberian is now paid, and that is true. While they do have a premium version, they have an entirely free legacy version, and you can do everything I'm gonna show you in this video inside of the legacy version. So let's go ahead and open up Devil Mask. I'll open up my Tetris file, we'll break it down together, and I'll show you how you can make authentic 16-bit Sega Genesis style chiptune with entirely free tools. All right, so downloading Devil Mask is super simple. You're just gonna go to devilmask.com. You can scroll down, read a little bit about it, and then you're gonna wanna get the app here. Now, for whatever reason, it is more expensive for Mac than it is for PC. I'm not sure why that is, but if you don't wanna pay for it, again, the title of this video was free tools and I intend to deliver, you can click try the legacy version here and then you basically just download it for whatever operating system you have. And also it's gonna be a good idea to download the manual as well because you're gonna be referencing that a lot. So when you first launch Devil Mass, you're gonna see something like this and I know it looks a little daunting and a little strange and probably unlike any other music software you've ever seen before. It kind of looks like a spreadsheet, but fear not, I am here to help you. Me and King Boo over here are gonna guide you through to a nostalgic chiptune nirvana here by the end of this video. So let's break down each section of Devil Mask to make it a little bit less intimidating. So first up, we have the pattern matrix right here on the far left side of your screen. Now you can sort of think of these as chronological chunks or sections of your song. Each of these things here across the top represent a different channel and one of these represents one chunk of music. So you could add different chunks of music like this, delete different chunks of music like this. So right now this piece only has one giant chunk of music. So let's go over here to the instruments panel. Now the instruments are going to change based on whatever sound chip you're using. So you can see this logo here or this text 
next year. That means we're using the Genesis sound chip. And so it says FM because, as you know, the, the Genesis chip is very famous for that classic FM synthesis sound. So we have our six FM synthesis channels. I'll get into that in a second. But each of these instruments, essentially you use them on each of these channels. Now, if you don't want to spend a bunch of time tweaking instruments, which you absolutely can, you can go in here and actually tweak each of the individual operators, which is super fun. If you're really into like sound design, you can essentially create your own Sega Genesis style sounds, exactly how the you know old school developers would have developed them and designed them, which is really cool if you're into sound design. If you don't want to do that, you can just click this folder button here and you can actually open up a bunch of pre-made instruments that Defle Mask has created for you. So you can go in here and do FM and then you can basically grab any of these FM synthesis instruments and just load them up into your Defle Mask instance. So this final panel here essentially lets you adjust the parameters of this sequencer. You don't need to worry about all that for this beginner tutorial. And by the way, leave a comment below if you want me to do like a full in-depth tutorial of Defle Mask. I'm just gonna scratch the surface in this video, but let me know if you want me to do a full in-depth tutorial. Lastly, but not leastly. Leastly? 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 Lastly, but not least, we have the sequencer here, which I've alluded to several times throughout this video, and this is essentially where you're going to be programming all of your notes. So I'm going to open up one of the many demo songs that Defle Mask comes preloaded with. This is actually, in my opinion, the best way to learn the software, is by studying other demo songs. So let's open up Angel Island Zone. So it automatically started playing there. Each column across here represents a particular sound channel. And what's really cool about Defle Mask and chiptune trackers in general is that you are constrained by the same constraints that all of the composers had when they composed all of our favorite games from you know the 80s and, and 90s. And so for example, I only have six FM synthesis channels and I have to work within those parameters. And then I have these here, which are basically like, basically just sine waves. So you can listen here. And then you have one noise channel, which a lot of composers use for like a hi-hat sound. Each channel, you'll notice you have all sorts of different multicolored text in here, basically inputs. These notes here are gonna be your actual musical notes. So C3 is gonna be the actual C3 like on the piano. So if you actually watch this, if we just solo this FM channel and you watch this keyboard down here, You can input notes by using your keyboard. There's musical typing enabled, but I prefer to use a MIDI controller. This does have MIDI support, so you can plug in your MIDI controller. Makes it super easy to input notes. Now this value here in every column, this green value, is your volume. So notice how this is sort of fading down. Now, by the way, it uses a hexadecimal system. So 7F is gonna be the loudest possible volume, and it's gonna keep going down, 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 down. So listen, listen to this. Notice how the volume changes in this particular channel. Now this right here is an effect. The manual will tell you essentially all the effects that you can do. So if I click this little face logo here, you can actually see that I can choose my sound chip. And what's really cool is if I click, let's say I wanna click NES, I can say the NES plus the Famicom disc system. So I can click that and notice how all the channels have now changed. We now have exactly how it was, right? With the Famicom disc system two square wave channels, a triangle channel, a noise channel, a PCM sample channel, and the Famicom disc system other sample channel. All right, so I will show you more about Defle Mask as we go along, but let's rewind a little bit because I want to tell the story of kind of my process of how I wrote this Tetris theme. So the main Tetris theme is extremely simple. It actually only has two sections. There's an A section, the do 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 that everybody knows. And then there's the B section, which is the very legato do 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 do. And really the whole piece is just the A section twice followed by the B section. And then the whole thing loops. So I knew that if I was going to flesh out this piece, I really needed to add quite a bit more original material. I just thought about the Tetris theme, I thought about the game, I thought about the vibes that people have while playing the game, and really what happens is like these musical ideas just start bubbling up in my brain, and what do I do? I capture it with my handy dandy voice memos. My best ideas by far come to me when I'm 
going for a walk around the neighborhood, doing the dishes, getting groceries. Like that's when the ideas come to me. And so I'm always ready to record those in voice memos. And the positive side of that is that when I come to my software, when I come to Devil Mask, I have all these ideas just ready to go. And that's really my first tip when it comes to composing 16-bit music, which is don't come to Defle Mask or any DAW or really any piece of technology just trying to compose inside of the software, especially if you're a beginner, because think about it. If you're trying to compose inside the software, you're not only trying to exercise the skill of composition, but you're also learning a new piece of software while you're doing it. I mean, that's like, composition on hard mode. How much easier would it be if you had the idea of the arrangement and the melody or the chords or the rhythm? And it doesn't need to be fully fleshed out. You just have some basic foundational idea of what you want the piece to sound like before you come to Defle Mask. That way you can focus on learning the software rather than having to compose on the fly. Also, I should mention here that if you're like, well, Matt, I don't really know how to even create these melodies and harmonies that you're talking about to begin with. Uh, I have a free one and a half hour workshop where I basically guide you through everything you need to know, a full roadmap to becoming a video game composer. It is completely free. I essentially exhaust all my knowledge on everything you need. And then if you wanna go even deeper, I have a fully paid course where I essentially guide you through everything. Melody writing, uh, the importance of motifs, harmony, there's quizzes, there's all sorts of stuff to basically give you a super solid foundation of video game composition. So whether you're a developer, whether you're an aspiring composer, or you just wanna improve your skills, I would love for you to check out those resources. Definitely at least check out the free workshop. And if you wanna go deeper, check out the paid course as well. So once I had some arrangement ideas, I knew that I was ready to open up Defle Mask and start putting some of these things down in the tracker. So in the beginning here, you'll hear this introduction. So this whole piece is an A minor, so it's really going from the A to the G to the F, and that bass is emphasizing that this way. And you hear that, -wee -wee. that is the portamento slide. Zero three is the portamento slide up. Zero two is the portamento slide down. So listen to this introductory effect as it comes in here. Notice that the volume is going down with each cycle. So now like watch this. If I were to select all of these effects here and I were to delete them, listen to what it sounds like now. Not nearly as compelling, but when I put the comportamento slide in there, that's that chip tune vibe we all love. The intro continues. I basically repeat that same A to G to F to G to A in the bass, except this time I'm actually starting to phase in some other effects here. So zero seven is a tremolo sound. So you can hear that in action here with this particular effect. Kind of add some buildup, some excitement. F M1, I almost always use for bass. I just, I've always done that. FM2 and three and four and five, I'll use interchangeably for things like melodies, counter melodies, uh, pads, organs, guitars, things like that. FM6, I always use for drums. And yes, your boy is using the drum samples from Sonic 1 and 2. I mean, come on, bro. Did you think I was going to do anything else? Let's go, dude. So now moving on to the next section of the introduction, you'll notice what I'm doing here is heavily quoting the main motif, but not quite getting into the meat and potatoes of the actual melody. So here's what that sounds like. Now notice how there's an echo there. You cannot produce effects like we would think of them in a DAW, in a tracker, like you can't do, there's not like an echo plugin or a reverb plugin, so you have to make your own echo, which I actually think is super fun. So let's listen to that. And really all it is is exactly what you would think. It's the same note, but it's just sequentially lowered in volume over time. And I'm matching that with the PCM channel here. 
So the drum beat is very sparse. So what I like to do is sort of in those subdivisions, add some more movement with these arpeggios. And then with the bass. Now you'll notice here the hi-hat actually changes from an open to a closed hi-hat. Listen to the sound. So the way I'm doing that is I'm actually switching instruments. And one of these is a 09 is gonna be my open hi-hat. So if I scroll down to my instrument list, see this one right here, 09. And if I was if I was organized, I would label that. But that's gonna be my open hi-hat. And then 08 is gonna be my closed hi-hat. The way that you set this up is super simple. You just go into the instrument, see this volume channel right here? I'm slowly bringing this curve down so that when the noise channel hits, it goes like tss like an open hi-hat. But then on the this one, on the closed hi-hat, notice how drastic it is. So it's like t -t -t -t. So it kind of emulates what a real drummer would do. All right, so let's continue on. So here's kind of the quote. And then your boy has to go into the Dorian mode because I mean, what are we doing here if we're not going into the Dorian mode? Here, here it comes, ready? Now, if you're paying attention, you'll also hear that I added in a counter melody. This is also a really great way to take a super familiar theme and to spice it up, to make it different. Here is my counter melody in the context with bass and drums. So now we're in the official A section. So you can hear that counter melody here. So notice how the instrument switches. It goes from this kind of uh, horns sounding thing to these bells. That's because I'm actually switching instruments, which is pretty fun actually. The fact that you can go back and forth between instruments and switch them really quickly on the fly. So another thing I'm doing is creating an echo effect using the PCM channel. This is a very, very common technique for old Sega Genesis composers. So here I have my FM synthesis um, main melody here, but then notice how it's playing the exact same thing except a couple octaves away, but it's playing it one row delayed. So this is how it sounds without the echo chorus, without the PCM channel activated. Okay, and here's how it sounds with that echo. And then of course we have this really cool effect that goes up like this, listen to this. That to me is like the essence of composing in a tracker. Those really, really fun effects. All right, so this is that B section I was talking about, listen to this. Again, I feel like what makes this is that counter melody. Now, what's funny is my first pass at this piece was actually more upbeat, and I even had this crazy like death metal <laughs> double kick breakdown during the B section, and the developer was like, this is cool, but it's a puzzle game, okay? Like, we're trying to like help people relax, and I'm like, fair enough, but that's what this sounds like. So after the B section, I knew that I couldn't just loop back to the A section. I needed to add something a little different. I needed to take the piece in a little bit of a different direction. So this is the C section. This is completely original composition.
Now, if you notice, the bass does not go off of the A, but what I love to do is just keep the bass on a note and let the chords change over top of that pedal note. So literally, it just stays on the A. Now this is probably my favorite part of the piece. So what I do is, is a little bit of a fake out. I make the listener think we're going back to the A section by quoting that really famous do 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 But rather than going into this very typically minor sort of cadence, I completely change it up and do this super jolly, like celebratory major key kind of vibe. It's pretty fun, so check it out. Now this section basically is a fully chromatic walk down from the A minor to the E because the E is the five chord back to the A. So then if I knew if I went from A to E, it would be a perfect transition for the loop. So that's what this sounds like. Also dude, those drums, come on bro, let's go. And then it goes back to the top. So here is the loop in context. The best way that I know of to really, really quickly improve your chiptune composition skills is transcribing. So definitely check out this video next about why transcribing is so important. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my arcade in the description and I'll see you next time.